Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Magnus and today we're going to talk about how to build an office network and how to segment it. Segmentation is actually the base of network. It increases security, it makes easier integration, it gives structure and it gives scalability. And that's one key factor to really consider how to scale a network and how to build with it and how to grow with it or how to decrease the network if you're moving away from data centers up to the cloud, if you're doing changes. Segmentation is done with VLANs or VRFs or maybe firewall zones. So you have different VLANs connected to a firewall or to a router. This gives segmentation. So that's the basis of it. Network segmentation relies heavily on IP structure or any structure at all. So you need to have a plan when you're going to segment your network and how you should do it. The most basic segmentation of it all, it's yes to segment clients from servers. And if you haven't done that, start with that immediately. It will give a huge difference. Maybe at first you will not have any firewalls between the clients and server. That's a great add on later on. And we will make a new video regarding that. And I will be talking about identity based firewalls. For segmentation 101, just segment clients from servers so they're not on the same network. Yes, there is exceptions and that's mostly because of slow links. If you want to reinstall like a Windows 10, it will be a huge hassle if you only have a two meg line. So then you need to have some sort of patch servers. But the general rule is clients and servers should be segmented and separated from each other. So how can actually segmentation give you more flexibility? Well, you have less dependencies. It's a lot easier to rebuild an office network than it is to rebuild the server network. So that's why you want to segment and separate the servers from the clients. If you get purchased by a different company, then expect you to need to be able to rebuild your office network, but you try to avoid to rebuild your data center. Segmentation and really separate the different services from each other will give it easier for you to integrate with others because you have less dependencies. When when you start to think about clients within the office network, then you realize it's not only PC and laptops, you actually have printers, you have video equipment, alarm systems, you maybe have something that control your office light. I don't know what you have, but IoT devices is getting more and more common. So you need to plan of something more than just PCs and laptops. Even after you have planned for a different type of clients, then you start to realize but the corporation doesn't own all the devices. Yeah, that's correct. You have bring your own devices in most cases. And if you don't think you have it, you have it, but you don't know about it. Make a office network design based on reality. And the reality is people will bring their own laptops. People will bring their own equipment. And it's better to build something for it than try to stop it. Because if you're in if you're in a tech company, people will figure out a way to go around it. I myself work for an ISP and we are several hundred technicians. If someone wants an internet line, they will build an internet line to their office. Just make sure to really think about the different type of devices that you have and who owns the devices. Consultants bring your own device, third party vendor helping you with the printers. They need access somehow. Should they be able to connect to the network or do they need to use some sort of jump kit or similar? When you're starting to think about all the sort of devices you have, you get a quite a long list. You get printers, you get video systems, you get alarms, you get whatever. There will be many devices, especially when it comes to IoT. Group things, try to figure out something that they have in common. If they are corporately owned or if they are privately owned or third party, then you can group them differently. Grouping devices will be key to succeed with network segmentation and building an office network. Try to make it easier for people to do it right instead. So. Just add a guest network, just add a trusted user and trusted devices. So you can separate it on many things. When you're building an office network, you also need to think about, you need to be able to add and remove offices in an easy way. Just think about how many offices you have today. What happens if you add 10 offices or what happens if you remove 10 offices? Maybe you don't even have two offices today. Things happen, things change. Just take that into consideration. What I normally do, I make an office VRF where the offices can talk to each other, but if they need to go between different security zones, then it goes centrally. And in the central, I have all the equipment that I need to run the office network, like wireless controllers or similar. One of the key concerns, or one of the key factors to really succeed when an office network is to have the general feeling 
that no matter how you're connected, you still feel like you're on the office and you have the same access, no matter if you're connected to the LAN, to the Wi-Fi or to the VPN. Your access should not be depending on how and where you are connected. It should be the same feeling if you're on the LAN, the Wi-Fi or the VPN network. If your company exists in more countries, make sure to have one office network per country. It makes it a lot simpler. In this case, you have one segment for the Swedish office network and one segment for the American office network. And then you have a transit core between them. I normally recommend to have local internet breakouts. And the reason for this is geo-blocking. You want the staff to be able to reach local content that is only accessible in their respective countries. When you have different countries within your office network, you want to be able to supernet your, your IP networks. So it's easier to understand which IP network belong to Sweden and which one belongs to US. It's just easier and simpler and it gives more structure to the network if you have it set separated and if you are able to supernet networks to really pinpoint where they are located. This will give great benefits when it comes to network optimization. Do it correctly from beginning. If you want to see how to build an IP structure that works for an international company, please comment below and I'll try to make a video regarding that as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.